Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft Supply. Let's make a gorgeous wine rack. Great project, not terribly difficult. Only four pieces to the pattern, a lot of squares, a lot of straight lines. But here's the thing, this is making me crazy not to decorate this. There are so many possibilities. You could hand tool grape leaves or grape vines, Mexican basket weave braid, edge work, lace work, spots, rivets, and now I'm rolling. Not the point of the tutorial. Gonna get you a good pattern, good measurements, take that ball and run with it. All right, so first off, wine bottles can get pretty heavy. So I'm gonna use a 10 to 11 ounce English bridle. You could certainly go with a veg. We just need a little weight there. Now, easy addition if you wanna add a third or a fourth here. Thing is, that starts to get pretty heavy. So I would put another piece of leather on my backing, give that some good strength and some, some body to it so it'll, it'll stay flush against the wall hanging in your home. All right, so first off, pattern, foundation for the whole project. If we're clean and tight here, everything else will fall into order. Now, I've taken three eight and a half by 11 pieces of copy paper or notebook paper. Now, a lot of material out there makes a better pattern, but everybody's got some notebook paper or copy paper. Tape three together. Now, here's the easiest thing. I've already cut this down, and I've done a couple of things to save us a little time, but I'll explain every one. What I typically will do is take my full piece, and I'll fold it over. Secondly, I'm gonna fold it again. Now, if my corners are clean and tight, everything on that pattern will fall into order. It'll be very symmetrical. When I go to cut these lines, these tapers, if I'm folded, I make one cut, every taper matches perfectly. So, we've got a 23 by six inch wide main body pattern, good starting point. Now, one last thing. Your project, you can go any direction you want. Six inches seems to be just right. Five a little thin, but with six, the bottom of the bottle hangs out about one inch. The top of the bottle hangs out about one inch before it goes to the throat, makes it very clean and very balanced. All right, so we're starting with a six by 23 inch piece. Now, let's head over to this table. I've got a set up ready to make the patterns themselves and make the measurements, so let's get started. Nice, very clean, very square. We've got our work area. All right, so. Just happens on this project, nicely. This rivet hole is the center of the whole project. So let's start here. Now, like I said, I've measured some of this out to save us time. We're gonna need four and a half inches between our rivet holes, but we're gonna need 10 inches on our loop and we'll get to that very shortly. So let's start right in the center and put that in. Now, got a center line here. So let's go ahead and mark that. Now, four and a half inches. So I'm gonna come out four and a half, make a mark, but I wanna mark this at three eighths of an inch inside of each side for my rivet holes. Now we're gonna use Chicago screws so it's a little bit larger head. Now, our center line, we're gonna come out four and a half on the left side. Let's square that up clean, nice. Draw that in and again, three eighths of an inch from either side. Now let's connect those two and our rivet holes will be consistent. Nice. Now let's go ahead and mark those, circle them so we know those are our rivet holes. Nice. Now we want to drop in a very nice detail. It's a corkscrew loop. Now you can go with a T-handle, simply twist this 90 degrees and that'll sit nicely or sideways, this is an, inex an inexpensive but very nice little corkscrew. Now, here's the thing though. I don't want that too high because I don't want the ends of this hanging off the project. To me, that looks odd. I want it inside the edges of my project. So let's do this. Let's come up two inches. Again, I'm gonna square. Nice. Now, one and a half inches wide. So, on my center line, I'm gonna go one and a half inches. Let's square to three quarters, one and a half. Now, let's come in three eighths inches from each side. Well, nice, there's my rivet holes. That'll hold that securely. Now, five inches, the last bit of the distance. What I need is my taper here, but we are gonna have a starting area right here, and when we mark in our, our billet, we're gonna have an ending. So. This is gonna be two inches wide because if I get too small on my D-ring here, it starts to look a little out of proportion with the wider body of the project. 
But secondly, we're gonna use the Jeremiah Watt Ds. These are engraved and those are just gorgeous. Very nice touch. All right, so two inches wide. So I'm gonna to go to my center line and I'll mark two inches on either side. Now, I need my rivet holes, but this is a place where we can be easily confused. Let's just drop a line in at three eighths of an inch, but I don't wanna mark my rivet hole right here or here because that's actually the edge of my project. So let's make sure we come in three eighths of an inch. Now, we're gonna add one more screw, just seems to balance the whole thing out. So let's drop that on our center line, come down half an inch, nice. There we go, good. Last thing, we're gonna cut our taper. Again, we know where to start and we know where to stop, so here's the easiest part. I'm gonna fold my pattern, <clears throat> excuse me, fold my pattern with this up, fold it a second time. Now, I can use a French curve, uh, I can actually use just a platter for my kitchen, but I'm gonna freehand this cut, and here's the trick. Because I'm cutting this folded down, even if my cut's a little deeper than I would like, when I open this up, all four corners will match perfectly. So let's drop in a cut here. Nice. So again, one cut, and everything is perfectly symmetrical. That's what we're looking for. Now, I've got my marks for my rivets on this end, but not down here. So let's fold this over. Square that, nice. Now I can simply take an awl, punch. Now when I flip this over, I can see exactly where my rivet holes are. Very good. Now, our main body is done. I'm gonna step up, get another piece of paper, and we're gonna make our, our last three pieces to the pattern. Now, these three pieces, easy enough, all square. First off, let's start with our loop. Now we're at four and, a, four and a half inches right here, but we need a 10 inch loop. Now, that'll keep our wine bottle in there without it being too snug or too loose. So let's cut a six inch by 10 inch piece out of this. Nice, now let's save this piece of paper because we'll use this even further. So we've got a six by 10. Now, all we need, rivet or Chicago screw holes at each corner, three eighths inch from the side, three eighths inch from the end. So let's drop that in. Nice, now let's mark that. So those will be our rivet or Chicago screw holes. So easy enough. Now this is a great place for decoration. About a third of the way up is almost centered on the loop. That would be just gorgeous with your Mexican basket weave or conchos or spots. Or even you could cut a point here or some kind of an indention, some kind of a creative cut, all would look great. But again, let's keep this one simple. So we're at six by 10. We're gonna cut two, all right? Now let's set that aside. Go to the third piece, going north, our loop for our corkscrew. Now it's one and a half inches wide. Easy enough, because that's one and a half. So I could square that against my edge. Now, we're gonna go four inches, a little bit heavier leather here, so I need to accommodate for a little extra room. So let's square. There's four, square on my edge. Nice, there we go, that's one and a half by four. Easy enough with a square. Now measuring this, again, all we're gonna have to do is add two screws to hold it and four holes for lace. All right, so let's do this. Let's mark our center line, which is at three quarters of an inch. Same on this end. Now, let's connect the two and we're gonna work out from there. Four inches long, so let's draw a center line at two inches. Nice. Now, we're going to loop this. As opposed to sideways, this is gonna be up and down. So my rivet holes need to be on this center line. Now, one and a half inches wide. So, let's come in, three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Now that's gonna match our pattern. So I'm gonna circle that, nice. Now we need our lace holes. Again, three eighths, good distance in, not too close to the edge. And then of course, three eighths, three eighths. Flip that around, same thing. 
Nice. All right. So let's draw those in. Now that piece, easy enough, ready to go. Last piece is our billet. Now we're using a good bit of heavy leather here. So again, I'm going to add a little more room to this. We're going to cut this two inches by five and a half. So now I can take this last piece. Let's mark it two. Perfect. All right. Well, we certainly got our worth out of that piece of paper. All right. So now this can be confusing. I want to put three screws in here. This one, not terribly necessary, but it kind of balances the whole thing out. Now this can be a little confusing and I'll show you why. Let's go ahead and lightly pin in our round ends. This is going to keep us from making a mistake because it's easy to reverse these two lines. So let's do this. We're going to come in three eighths of an inch. Let's center that. There's our first rivet or Chicago screw hole. Now half inch apart from our main body pattern. Let's drop in there. We're going to come in three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Now, nice. Let's simply fold this over. Use our awl. Mark those three holes. Now, holes are marked, ready to go. When I do a bend back on that, those are going to match perfectly. All right, let's back up to this guy. This is one and a half, one and a half by four. This, two by five and a half. Nice. Now we know what our measurements are. Easy enough. So we've got our four pattern pieces. Now let's mark this on some leather and cut. But before we cut leather or even mark leather, we need to just take a quick second on our patterns. Now for our main body, I've listed wine rack, outside dimensions, cut one up. Now that refers to left or right. This isn't a perfect example because it's symmetrical, but if I have a left panel and a right panel, I can simply cut in, cut one, flop, cut one, or cut two, one up, one down. Easy enough, but that keeps me from making a mistake. Lastly, on our billet with our round corners, I'll tend to mark areas that I need to mark in red, so therefore I don't drop a hole in there and mess up my project. Now I've dropped in a straight edge. I busted a straight edge into my double shoulder. Now I'm just going to take a quick peek. I can scoot that down keeping my pattern within good leather. Again, six inch, same width. I can butt that there. And just marking that with an eyeball, I can put another in and I've got plenty of room while staying away from that bad cut. So my first cut, all I need to do, six inches wide. Now, two inches on my straight edge. So I'm gonna bring that to four. Bring that to four. Now, let's double check, four, Six, six. Now a clean cut, everything is exactly the same width. Now, one more note though, I'm cutting away from my work. Here's my body and my loops. So if I make a mistake, I cut into to scrap and not into my project. And my last cut, very nice. Good, clean, consistent cut. Now let's take our pattern, take our main body, I've already laid this out so we know where that goes. I'm going to drop him in, keeping clear of that small cut. Take my square and I could simply drop that on. That's going to give me a nice weight. Now I'm going to mark this. I'm going to mark my cut lines, my punch lines for my main body, and both of my loops. And marked it clean and ready to go. Now we've got our main body cut and our two loops. Now we're going to jump over to the last two pieces of the pattern. The first being the billet. Now we need a two inch by five and a half. Best thing to do, wood handle strap cutter, great tool. So I'm going to take a piece of my scrap, drop that in at two inches, and simply pull. Perfect two inch piece every time. Now I need two at five and a half, and I'm going to mark those. Nice, so billets ready to go, marked and cut two inches by five and a half. Now let's go to our last piece, one and a half inch by four inches for the corkscrew loop. And we're marked. All right, so all pattern pieces are cut and marked. Now let's punch some holes and do our round end punch. Let's start with our billets because I'm going to have a round end punch here. I've marked that in red so I can easily see that. So I'm going to take a two inch round punch, 
butt that against the edge of my leather. I can put my pinky right there and I can feel that sit down. Going to double check, make sure A, I don't have daylight at the end of my tool and that both sides are an equal distance from the strap. And we've got a good clean punch. So let's punch all four ends here. Nice. Last punch. Now, we're going to use a Chicago screw. That has a diameter of 3 16 inch. So I'm going to take a drive punch at 3 16 and I'm going to punch six holes on each. And my last punch. Very nice. All right, so from here, I'm going to go to my loops, two, main body, and corkscrew loop. And last hole on the last piece, very nice, clean and tight. It's what we're looking for. Now, a little bit plain, let's add some edge work. So with our edge work, what are we talking about? We're going to add a groover, a bevel, and a slick, or a burnisher to our edge. This is going to give us a very professional, very finished look. Now, I hope that along the way you'll start using this as your standard operating procedure on your projects. Because here's the thing, you'll get used to seeing that nice clean edge. You'll go to a craft fair, you'll see a vendor that does not take the time to work their edges. You will be surprised how amateur their work is going to look compared to yours. And that's what we're looking for. All right, so first tool, Groover. This is adjustable. Now, primary job here is to sink a line parallel to the edge of your leather so you can hand sew but I tend to use this just about everywhere because it's a beautiful edge treatment. Now, I'm going to butt the shank of the tool next to the edge of the leather. I set this as an, at an eighth of an inch, and I'm simply going to give this a little counterclockwise, counterclockwise motion. Simple as that. Now, I've got a nice groove line. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to groove all sides, front only, for all six pieces of my pattern. And the last two grooves, very nice. All right, so we're ready to add our bevel. Now, a bevel is simply going to knock off the hard top corner, give us a nice rounded edge. Where though, as with the groover, only the front side. Now we're going to do the front and back, all sides, all panels, and we're going to use the JW Quick Change Edger, five tools in one. Great way to go. So, I'm going to drop my edger. And simply push. Very nice, very clean. So now, again, I'm going to do all sides front. I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to do all sides back, setting us up to round our edges. And the last piece. Very nice, very clean, very finished. And our back side. Very good. Now, we're going to take a little dab of gum tragacanth, and I'm simply going to wet my edges. And again, all panels, all four sides. Take my slicker, I'm going to drop that on, and I'm going to run that back and forth dozen, maybe dozen and a half times. But I can start to feel that getting rounded and slicked. I'm going to do every edge on every panel. And slicking down to my last piece, and I can also let this hang off the edge of my table when I want to do my rounds or larger pieces. But look at that, that beautiful slicked rounded edge. That is a nice touch. All right, so we've drilled, we've beveled, we've grooved, now we've slicked or burnished. Our last step, we're going to knock this together, and it's going to be gorgeous. So I'm going to clean this up, get a handful of Chicago screws, and we will pick up from there. Nice, now we're set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and start with our body. Now we're going to use Chicago screws. We're going to use quarter inch and we're going to use three eighths at one point because we're going to have three layers of this nine to 10 or 10 to 11 back to back and we're going to need a little distance there. Now with Chicago screws, I typically will add a little dab of white glue to the throat for each one so over time that won't work itself out. Now, let's start at the bottom. Here are my two holes for my, my corkscrew loop. So I'm going to start down here at the bottom. I'm going to take a panel. Now, the reason we bevel and groove both ends is because at this point, I'm going to have to flip this upside down and start at the bottom away from the top. Here's the problem. 
If I only bevel and groove one side, I'm concentrating on my placement. Therefore, and I have done this a time and time again, I'll put my edge here where I've done my edge work and my naked edge <laughs> will be outside. But if I go ahead and bevel, groove and slick both ends, don't have to worry about it. Now let's take two quarter inch Chicago screws, female, we're going to drop those in. Now let's flip this over. Look at that. That is the point of taking our time with our pattern. My screw holes match perfectly. Look how clean and even that is. All right, so let's take a little, let's take one of the male pieces. I'm going to add just a little dab of glue to the end, drop that in, and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now we're going to screw those down snug. All right, now we need to pull this up. But also, we've got to lay in our next loop, which again is going to have to be upside down and backwards away from our top. Now here, I'm going to take a 3 inch, screw 3 8 inch Chicago screw because I've got to go through both loops and my back panel. Now let's flip that around so my loop is hanging off my table. Let's find our screw holes right there. Very nice, right where it's supposed to be. Same on this side. Now again, longer mail piece for a 3 8 inch screw. So let's screw those in. Nice, that gets that one in. Now we're gonna go to again, a quarter inch screw coming in from the front. Let's flip, let that loop hang off the edge of our table. And again, Rivet holes, perfect. So let's go ahead and add a dab of glue here. Drop that in and screw these down. All right, easily done. Boy, it looks good already, doesn't it? All right, let's take our corkscrew loop, drop in two screws, again from the front. Lay that sideways. I can feel those two screws sit right down in there. Again, taking our time with our pattern. Let's add a little glue to the male. Drop that in, same thing there. And secure that down nicely, good. Looking good thus far. Let's jump over to our billets. Now I'm gonna use 3 8 inch screws here because I'm gonna have to go through three depths. Now let's flip our pattern. Drop that in, and perfect, our holes sit nicely. Just what I want. But here, let's don't forget our D-ring, and we need to make sure that's upside down, facing forward. Now I'm gonna drop in the three screws here. I'm gonna flip this around, add the D and the billet on the other end. We are almost there. And secure those last two screws in, very nice. Last thing. We're going to add some lace. All I need to do is I'm going to take a piece of thong, suede, latigo, any is good. And I'm going to come from the inside through my two holes. Now I'm going to cross over and go into the next hole from the outside. It's going to make a nice little X. Same on this side. Nice, so we've got an X on the outside. Let's pull that tight, making an X. Nice, now what I can do, I can tie this a number of ways. I can come back through the front and let these hang down. But what I'm gonna do is tie a simple square knot. So I'm gonna bring laces to one side, tighten it. Now one lace goes over the other and then through my loop. Let's tighten that down, very nice. Now I'm gonna come back through my loop. I'm gonna go over again Back through my loop. Nice, now I've got a good clean knot on the inside. I'm gonna cut that off. Clean and tight, very good. That's what we're looking for. Now, last touch, let's take a corkscrew, drop that in, perfect. Well, that is a great project. Now, like I said, Worlds of room for decoration here. Basic, simple, clean pattern, good measurements. 
I hope you take that ball and run with it and make some gorgeous wine racks. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.